start learning about last week. It's in our verse. Alistair, do you remember? What did we start learning about last week? Christ is the Savior of the body that we learned that last week. Does anybody else remember? What was the... That was part of what we learned about something. Allie, do you remember? No, that wasn't last week. It was not that long ago, but it wasn't last week. Aurora, do you remember? What what meant? Savior of the body? Okay. What's the body? Everybody? No. You were here last week, right? Okay, so now you remember? Um, the body of the church. The body of the church. That's right. So we learned that the church is a body. And who's the head of the body? Christ. Christ. Who's the head of the church? Christ. Christ. We also learned last week that the church was like something else. It was like a body, and it was like a something else. And Christ was something in that example also. These are, what are these things here? They're like bricks, they're stones, but they're not just stones out in the field somewhere. They're, they're in a wall. Kind of like stairs. Uh, they're kind of like stairs, yeah, but that's because just, so they're in a wall, and a wall goes into a what? What is, what is happening here with these stones? Well... It looks like a church. I don't know about that. It's hard to tell because we've got the people in here too. But these are the walls of a... Okay, what's this? Building. This is like a stone, right? Building. And here's another stone and a stone. And all these bricks and blocks go together to make a... Building. A building. That's right. So, a building. And Jesus is the foundation stone of the building. He's also the cornerstone. The cornerstone of the building, which is another important stone. But then we said um, that the, the church is like a building built upon Jesus Christ. So Jesus is the foundation of the building. He is the head of the body. And he's the savior. He's the head of the church. He's the savior of the body. But the apostles and the prophets were also foundations of the church. <clears throat> And then every person who becomes a part of a church, <clears throat> it's almost like they don't turn into a brick. But it's like they become a part of, Jesus, of God's building, the church. If you join a church, you have a spot where you belong in God's building. Just like we said, we have a body. We have different parts of our body. Who's the head of the body? Christ is the head of the body. He's the head of the church. But So that means Christ isn't the thumb, right? He's not the big toe or the appendix. He's the head, right? And I don't know what part I have or what part you have if you're in the church, but we all have different places to fit in a church. So now, today, we're going to talk a little bit more about churches and what they do. Okay, so what do you think? Al A.K. just said that churches talk about God. Okay, that's true. We're gonna, I'm going to call that something else in my list that I have on the other side of the board here. Can anybody think of something else that churches do? What do you think, Allie? They save people from their sin. They save people from their sin. Well, churches don't save people from their sin. Only one person saves. Who saves? God. He's the Savior. Even as Christ is the head of the church, and He is the Savior, right? Of the body. So, when churches are telling people about God, what are they telling them? They're telling them what God says about how to be saved. And that's why we think churches save people, but churches don't save people. Churches tell people how to be saved. God 
Jesus saves. Okay, so um, that one is close, but not right. Can you think of something else that, that happens at church? Something else that, that churches do? Activity. Like what kind of actions, what kind of things are going on at a church? Call somebody up and they talk about the Bible. They open up what? They talk about stuff. They talk about the Bible. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna add to you guys' list of what goes on at church. Do you remember way back when Jesus promised that He would build His church, and He would build it upon Himself, <clears throat> and the disciples. He told them they needed to go tell everybody about Him, but before they could go, they had to go and wait until something happened. And ten days later, right? Ten days later. The Holy Spirit came and filled the the Holy Spirit came and filled all the apostles and the disciples of Jesus, and they began to go out and tell everybody the wonderful works of God. And they were speaking in their home language, and people were hearing in their home language, and the two home languages were not the same home language, right? Like. If so, Miss, like, like if Miss Megan was back here and she started talking in Mongolian, so, and we could understand her in English. So they were speaking language to someone, but that person could hear it in their home language? Yes. That's a miracle. The Holy Spirit made that happen on the special feast day of Pentecost. And people were like, what is going on? And then Peter got up and preached. And Peter said, this is because the Holy Spirit has come. And he's calling on all of you to <clears throat> repent because you have taken Jesus Christ, who is the Lord, who is the King, who's the Christ, and you crucified him and killed him. <clears throat> but God raised him from the dead. <clears throat> so all those people, with because the Holy Spirit was working in their mind and in their heart, they said, we killed the Messiah. We killed the Christ. And they said, well, what should we do? And Peter said, repent and be baptized to show that you've believed on Jesus. And so, G so Peter offered to all of those people who had just seven weeks before killed Jesus, he offered them to be a part of the church, to be a part of God's family. You think God would do that? Yeah. Why? Well, it's not just that he's nice. He's merciful, isn't he? He'll forgive sins. Now, he doesn't forgive everybody. Only those who repent. What do you think it means to repent? You might not know, but every week we talk about it. You know how each week I talk about if you're going this way and you turn from your sin and believe on Jesus? Like in your mind, in your heart, in your thoughts, you're going that way, you like sin, you want to sin, you want to do, you, you like what you want, and when you turn from doing what you want and say, I'm going to do what Jesus wants, I'm going to obey him, and I'm going to do that because he died on the cross and told me I can only have my sins forgiven if I turn to him, and when we turn from our sin and believe on Jesus, that's repenting. So Peter was saying to these people, you thought Jesus was a criminal, but he's really God. And, what, and they said, well, what do we do? And he said, repent. Turn from those thoughts. Realize that Jesus is God. And if Jesus is God, what does that mean? If Jesus is the king of everything, what does that mean? Do you disobey the king? No. So if you, if you, if you believe that Jesus is God, you say, okay, what he says I need to do. And then, if you've done that, you need to be baptized, showing that you believe on Jesus. Have you ever seen somebody get baptized? Churches baptize people, right? That's one thing that they do. Now, who can be baptized? Actually, not everybody. I mean, everybody can get wet. But not everybody can be baptized. Not according to the Bible. Peter said to these people, what did he say they needed to do before he told them to get baptized? He said, right, right. and the word he used was, 
repent. So repent and then baptize. So you, you, you can't be baptized according to what the Bible says. You can get wet, but you can't be baptized unless you've turned from your sin and believed on Jesus. And so all the people, not all, well, all the people that day, when Peter preached, they, there was just a few of them, oh, a hundred or so there. And they were telling the people the wonderful works of God. And then they started listening, and Peter preached, and other people were explaining and, and, and telling what was going on. And that day, 3,000 people, 3,000 people. Now, I don't know how many is in your school, but I would guess there's about 500 in your school. Not even that many? Do you know how many is in your school? Yes. How many is in your school? I said about 500. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not the same, but it's close. So about six times is 500 plus 500 plus 500 plus 500 plus 500 plus 500. That many people, 3,000, repented. They turned to Jesus, and they were baptized. So you see, now this probably didn't look like this because they were in Jerusalem. But this man, which one? Yes, this man is being baptized. He's there in the water. They're going to take him. And he is, he's already professed that, he's, that he is, um, you need someone? Yes, I'll make sure, uh, what time do you guys, uh, we, what time do you guys finish? We finish at 12. At 12? Yeah. Uh, I'll be back at, uh, Hi, so you guys uh, leave at 12, right? Yeah, well, yeah, she I'll might have a snack or something. Yeah. Okay, so okay. you don't want me to drop her off at home, you'll take her off. I'll sleep while I'm out, right? Okay. okay. Sounds good. All right. So back to our story. What do we do? Oh, oh, they're baptizing people. The guy's standing there in the water. Is he going to stay standing there in the water? No. He's going to go under the water. Because baptism is a picture. Jesus was alive. And when they buried him, where did they put him? Under the water. In, no, they didn't put him under water. They, but, and then but did he stay there? Did Jesus stay dead? No. He rose up. And so baptism is a picture of Jesus' death. His burial and his resurrection. And that day, 3,000 people got baptized. Well, wow. so I'm going to show you the whole list. You're going to see the first thing. And you're going to see the others. So everybody, whoops, upside down. Can you read upside down? Yeah. 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 So one thing that churches do is baptize people. All right? Then, like, then what happened, there was, there was a tremendous... All kinds of people in Jerusalem were being kind to one another. They were helping one another. People that were poor were being helped with people, helped by people who had more money. And the thing that made all the difference was that the Holy Spirit was in them because they had believed on Jesus. So there was a whole bunch of people that were fellowshipping, meeting together. Every day they would go to the temple. And at the temple, the apostles would be there and they would be teaching from the Bible. Or preaching. Before this, everybody who had believed on Jesus, or everyone who had just believed on Jesus, they hated Jesus before, right? They wanted him to be crucified. But now, they knew that he was the Lord, but they, didn't, they needed to know what the Bible said about it, because they needed help. Now, the apostles, they had spent the last three years with Jesus. So they were sitting there trying to remember all the things that Jesus had said about the Bible, so they could tell the other people. But you know who they had to help them remember everything that Jesus said? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit helped them remember. And where was the Holy Spirit? No. Was he at the temple? No, he was inside. Every person who's believed on Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside them. It doesn't make sense to us, but the Spirit is not a body. So it's not like some body comes inside us. But when we turn from our sin and believe on Jesus, the Holy Spirit lives inside us. And the Holy Spirit was inside the apostles, and they were he helped them remember everything that Jesus taught them. And so the people who just believed on Jesus, they'd come to the temple, and they would hear what Peter or what John or what Andrew or what um, <clears throat> Judas or Simeon was teaching from the Old Testament what Jesus said and how to live what the Bible says, how to live like Jesus wants us to so that is like when when preaching happens that happens at church. Have you ever, ever been to a church? Yes. And the man up front, oh, yeah. 
He preaches. Now, he should be, I don't know what church you've gone to, but he should be open in the Bible and say, turn it in your Bibles to somewhere, and then he tells you, preaches what the Bible says. Well, that's what the apostles were doing. So, churches, they baptize people, but they only baptize people who have repented. Then, churches preach. You should be able to go to church and hear the Bible preached. Now, yes? Lots of different books. Okay. Well, song books, yeah, they sing and worship the Lord also. So, then, after they would go and listen to the apostles teaching and preaching, they would go over, sometimes they would go to somebody else's house. And you know what they would do at somebody else's house? They would fellowship. They would talk about what they heard from the apostles. So they were there, they were share. somebody might be there and say, I just lost my job, or I don't have this, and somebody else would be there, and they would say, well, I have plenty. You can have some of mine. They, they shared everything amongst themselves when it was needed. They read the Bible, and they fellowship. So this, they, that is fellowship and study. So churches baptize people, right? But only people who have, not everybody, only people who have okay. repented. And they preach the Bible. And they study the Bible and fellowship with one another about the things of God. And then, can you tell what, can you tell what I wrote there? Lord's, Lord's. Lord's Supper. That's right. So, supper means dinner. It means food, right? But this is the Lord's Supper. So, do you remember? I think we talked about it. But on the night before Jesus died, they had a big meal. Okay, well, I'm just, then I'm telling you. you you're, you're either listening or you're remembering. They had a big meal, and at the end of that big meal, Jesus said, I'm going to do something, and I want you to keep doing it until I come back to remember me. And he took some bread, unleavened bread, and he broke it up and said, eat this and remember me. He said, this bread is my body. Now, the bread wasn't his body. But when we eat the bread of the Lord's Supper, we remember that Jesus' body was broken. No bones were broken, but his body was broken. That's why he was bleeding and the crown of thorns on his head, hanging from a cross. And so Jesus said, when you eat this bread, remember that my body was given for you. And then... He passed around and they, they had some grape juice, fruit from the vine, grape juice. And he said, drink this blood. This is, I'm sorry, juice. This reminds you of my blood. Jesus, when he died on the cross, he bled, right? And his blood is way better than all the sacrifices that they used to sacrifice to have their sins covered, Jesus' blood covers everyone's sins forever. And so Jesus said, whenever you get together, as often as you can, stop it, you should have some bread and remember that I died, my body was broken for you, and you should drink some juice and remember that I shed my blood to cover your sins. And so, churches at different times, some do it a bunch, some do it once a year, but they just whenever the church decides to, they have something and they call it the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper is not filling. It doesn't fill our belly. It fills our heart. Because it reminds us, when we have the Lord's Supper, it reminds us that Jesus died on the cross, and when he died on the cross, his body was beaten and broken and his blood was shed. And one more thing that they do at church, and we can do this all the time, is what? Pray. Pray. That's right. So, and, and actually, when we talk about church, is a church a building? Yes. Churches can meet in a building, but is a church a building? I mean, is a church a building like this? Um, yes. Mm -hmm. No.
No. Church is a building, but who's the foundation of the building that we call the church? Christ. And he's not a block, is he? No. no. So the church, he's God. And the foundation of, of the church are the apostles and the prophets, the Old Testament and the New Testament. And every single person who repents, right, and is baptized and is brought into and becomes a part of the church, they're a part of that building, right? So church isn't the building, it's the people that are in the building is the church. And the people in the building... They, if they're in the church, they've been baptized. And they got baptized so that they could show everybody that they believed on Jesus, who died, was buried, and rose again. They come, and they come as much as they can, so they can hear the pastor and the preachers preach what the Bible says. Before and after and during the week, they get together with other people in the church... And they talk about what they learned at church. They talk about what they read in the Bible. They fellowship. They might have supper together. They might play baseball together. They fellowship and they study. Sometimes, once in a while, sometimes more, sometimes less, they remember the Lord's Supper. They remember the Lord's death by participating in the Lord's Supper. And they pray together. So, you all are young, and you're kind of too young to decide for yourself to be a part of a church. But you need to know what a church is. When you go to church, some people go to church that aren't a part of the church. Some people go into the church building and meet with the other church members that aren't a part of the church, right? Maybe they're not, maybe they haven't repented. Maybe they're not saved. You can't be a part of the church if you haven't believed on Jesus. You could go to the meeting of a church and listen to the preacher preach, but if you're not saved, you can't be a part of the church. Because it's only saved people that are in a church. Right? Yeah. So, um, and you have to be old enough to make a decision. You have to be old enough to say, I want to be a part of that church. Well, at some point, I don't know what age that is, but if, if your parents can say, no, you're not going to do that about anything, then you don't have the, you're just not you're not old enough to be a part of the church because your parents will say yes or no, right? So churches baptize, preach, study, remember the Lord's death through the Lord's Supper, they pray. And the next time, so me and Mrs. Bogan, we're gonna go away for a couple weeks. Mr. Ethan is gonna tell us some things from the Bible the next two weeks. And when I come back. We're going to talk about what the Bible, what the church preaches. It's the Bible, right? Yeah. It's the Bible. So, but don't skip, because we'll say something more than it's the Bible. All right? Okay. Who's the head of the church? Christ. Christ. Who's the savior of the church? Christ. Who's the foundation of the church? Christ. Who's the cornerstone of the church? Christ. Yes. He is preeminent. He's the most important. We wouldn't have a church if it wasn't for Jesus. Okay? That's all our lesson. <laughs>